Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be looking at a time of flight mass spec question, which falls under the atomic structure topic for AQA, A-level chemistry, all right? If you're doing OCR at Excel, you can still gain value from this video, but this is from an AQA past paper specifically. So let's read through the question and just check out what's happening here. So in the time of flight mass spectrometer, a germanium ion reaches the detector in 4.654 times 10 to the minus six seconds. The kinetic energy of this ion is 2.438 times 10 to the minus 15 joules. The length of the flight tube is 96 centimeters. And then we're given an equation here, all right? Kinetic energy equation. This is always given to you. So Ke equals half mv squared. And they've given us some values and some units here. So m is the mass in kilograms. V is the velocity, or they put it as speed, in meters per second, all right? And then we're given good old Avogadro's constant, 6.022 times 10 to the 23 per mole. All right, and it's asked us to use this information to calculate the mass in grams of one mole of these germanium ions, and we have to use our answer to state the mass number of this germanium ion. All right then, so pause the video guys, attempt the question yourself, see what I do, see where you went wrong, all that good stuff. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna break down some of the variables, okay? So first off, what we're going to be looking at is this length, this length right here, okay? This length can also be input into an equation that we have to remember. So what I like to teach my students for this topic, okay, there's two main equations that we need to be aware of, okay? We have this one, which is normally given to us, and there's also another one, okay, and that one is for velocity. So velocity equals distance over time, okay? Distance is equal to the length of the flight tube, okay? Because the flight tube, if you think of this, is the flight tube. We've got our ion here, it's flying down here to the detector, and it's a fixed length, so that is our distance, okay? And then we've got the time taken, all right? So if we look at the units here, we can think of the distance is going to be in meters, all right? That's just our fixed unit for distance, the length of the tube, and this is over time, which is in seconds, okay? So our velocity, we can see here, is meters per second, all right? So if you don't know what the equation is for velocity, which we can actually plug in right here into this equation, you can work it out yourself, all right? It's just meters divided by seconds. Okay, so hopefully that's pretty clear here. Now, I'm going to have to do some conversion in a second because hopefully you've noticed that the length of the flight tube is in centimeters, all right? We don't want that. We want meters. So just like with my other videos on amount of substance, I'm going to write down the variables that we have. Um, you don't have to do this in your exam. Save yourself some time. But I'm going to just outline everything so we have a detailed plan moving forward. So first up is our kinetic energy, okay? This value is given to us in the question as 2.438 times 10 to the minus 15, and that's in joules. All right, next up is our mass, all right? Because basically what I'm doing here is just looking for the variables in this equation, um, and I'm just ticking them off one by one. So mass, we don't actually know that, all right? So I'm just going to put a nice question mark there. Next up is the time taken, okay? And that's also given to us, all right? It's given to us right here, 4.654 times 10 to the minus six. All right, and that's gonna be obviously seconds. Nice old seconds. Okay, so what's up next is gonna be inputting our values into this equation here so that we can input that into here. Hopefully this makes sense, it's sort of like a step-by-step -step thing. Work out this equation, input that into here. Okay, that's gonna be the case for a lot of these calculations, all right? So just remember, this equation, this equation, good to go. So what I'm gonna do here is do velocity equals distance over time, equals our distance value, okay? This is going to be, as I said, the length of the tube, so 96 centimeters, but we have to convert that. That being due to our velocity units being in meters per second, meters over seconds. So that's gonna be 0 0.96 meters if I convert it. Next up is our seconds, which we put down here as 4.654 times 10 to the minus six. Okay, now if you do that, plug that into your calculator, you're gonna get a big old number here, 206,274.1728 meters per second. So this is a crazy number, it's flying super fast, okay? So what we have to do next is we're actually just going to take this velocity value, okay? And we're gonna plug it into this equation 
which we're going to rearrange to make them mass the subject because as we can see in the question right here, that is what we're concerned with. All right, so, okay, that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So our mass of our germanium ion, okay? Remember, this is mass of one ion. This is one ion right here, guys. Let's fly down this flight tube one at a time, okay? And that's what we're concerned with. So the mass of this, if we rearrange this expression up here to make mass the subject, it's going to be our kinetic energy divided by our velocity squared. And then because we have a half right here, I'm just gonna times everything by two. Okay, easy as that. So all I'm gonna do is plug that into my calculator. So our kinetic energy value here was 2.438 times 10 to the minus 15 divided by our velocity squared. All right, so I'm gonna bracket this up. Our velocity value was 206,274.1728. All right, you don't have to put as many decimal places as that, that's just what I did, it's feeling, feeling like it. So square that up. Don't forget your squares, okay? Really important for this equation. Plug that into your calculator and you should get the answer of 1.146 times 10 to the minus 25, okay? So what are the units for this? All right, the units are given to us in the question kilograms, all right? This is a unique case where the mass that is given out as an answer to these equations in atomic structure, this uh, time of flight mass spec, it's gonna be in kilograms, okay? Just really remember that because it's a unique case. Now, they want our answer in grams, okay? So I'm gonna actually convert that right here. So all I'm gonna do here is times by a thousand. So it's gonna be 1.146 times 10, and if you times by a thousand, it's gonna be minus 22. All right, and that's in grams. So then, it's really important that at this stage, you remember that this is the mass of one singular germanium ion, all right? But what they've asked us for is the mass of one mole of these germanium ions, okay? Now, at this stage, hopefully you're not lost, hopefully you know where we're going with this, but this is what I'm gonna use next, all right? Our Avogadro's constant. The reason for this is because this, like I said, is the mass of one ion. Okay, but there's going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23 ions in one mole of germanium. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just, I'm going to say, I'm actually going to write that out. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23 ions, GE ions, in one mole. Therefore, the mass of one mole of germanium equals this value right here, our 1.146 times 10 to the minus 22, multiplied by our Avogadro's constant. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply that by 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Okay, hopefully this makes sense to you guys. Now, if you put that into your calculator, you should just get an answer of 69.01212, dot, 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 dot. All right, now remember, this is going to be our grams, okay? Because we've already converted it at this stage. If you didn't do this stage and you left it in kilograms and then did this stage, you would have to convert it after. Either way, completely fine. Um, pretty much the same step either way, okay? All right, so that's our, actually our answer, but how many significant figures do we have to use here? So let's look at our data in the, in the question. So four sig figs here, 4.654, four sig figs here, four sig figs here, uh, what we got here, four sig figs here. So pretty safe to say four sig figs, all right? Now, some of you may think this is two, but the zero is actually count, all right? So I'm gonna say that our final answer here is going to be 69.01 grams, okay? Now, the mark scheme does accept just 69. That's completely fine. Whee. All right, so, so what we're gonna do here is we've actually missed our last res response that we need to do here is Use your answer to state the mass number of the germanium ion, okay? So another way to think of this, if we look at what this is right here, so there's, um, if there's, this is our mass, okay, for one mole. In other words, I'm just gonna write this out in blue, grams per mole of germanium. Now what is this unit for? What does this unit represent? This unit represents our atomic mass, okay? Grams per mole, relative atomic mass, mR, whatever you wanna call it, all right? So then, in that case, we can just think of our mass number as 69, okay? The reason that I put it as 69 specifically, rather than any sort of extra decimal places, is because 
under this topic, we want our mass number to be an integer. Okay, so the closest integer value is just 69. Okay, so that's the question out of the way. Let's check out the mark scheme and the examiner's report right now. So as always, not going to spend too much time on the mark scheme. Hopefully it was pretty self-explanatory when I laid everything out in the question. So let's just look at our examiner's report here. If you want to check this out yourself, just pause the video, read through the mark scheme, see if you made any silly mistakes or anything like that. Um, but yeah, examiner's report. This question proved challenging for students. The velocity was frequently calculated well, although a number of students did not convert the length of the flight tube into meters. Similarly, students were not always able to rearrange the expression for kinetic energy correctly in order to make mass the subject. Many students realized the need to convert the mass into grams by multiplying by 1000, but a good number were not able to use Avogadro's constant correctly in order to determine the mass of one mole of ions. Okay, I'm gonna make a note of that, we're not able to use Avogadro's. It appeared that the mass of a mole was not well understood by students. Most students who reached the end of the calculation realized that the mass number should be a whole number. All right, so let's briefly go over these points here. So converting mass is kilograms, all right? Did they do that here? Um, no, they talk about the flight tube. All right, my bad. So flight tube in meters, the reason for that is because this is in meters per second. So this has to be converted, all right? Otherwise, you're just gonna get a dodgy calculation going on. Um, what was next? Rearrange the expression to make mass a subject. So this just involves rearranging practice. Okay, just practice rearranging equations. You should be all good with this. 10 out of 10, easy peasy. So what's next then? Um, Avogadro's constant, all right. So just remember that if we've worked out in, in all these mass spec questions, all right, guys, this value, these, these equations, all these equations apply to a single ion, okay? So when we got to think about Avogadro's constant, Avogadro's constant tells us the amount of something in one mole, okay? So if you think of like a pair of socks is two or something, a dozen eggs is, or whatever is, dozen of something is 12 or something. Avogadro's is this fat off number right here. This is telling us that there's 6.022 times 10 to 23 of something per mole, okay? And that's what a mole is. All right, so that's the amount of something. So if this is for one ion, all that we need to do is to get the mass of one mole of that ion is to times it by Avogadro's constant. Hopefully this makes sense. All right, then that's the end of the video, guys. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, drop me a like. It really helps the channel grow. Hopefully, if you just remember these two equations, equation one and equation two, I'm gonna label those two there. You should be all good to go, all right? This one's given to you, this one isn't. So as long as you remember that, you should be fine. If for whatever reason you forget the equation, you can always work the equations out from the units, all right? Mass divided by seconds. It's getting a bit messy, isn't it? But hopefully that's all right. Now then, just remember also units, okay? I don't know why I did the arrow that way. <laughs> units, <laughs> that way. Um, kilograms, all right? Unique case for mass spec. Just try and remember it. Also, length of the tube, exactly the same as distance, and that's going to be in meters, not centimeters, all right? They'll often just give you these random units to confuse you and require conversion. So yeah, subscribe for future maths and science content, guys. Best of luck in your exams. Peace.